There are those whose views lead them to believe that if the mind is physical, we are, as soulless components of a godless cosmos, going to die when we die. It also, somehow, suggests to them that there's nothing wrong with raping babies. Scared and outraged, it doesn't take these pioneer folk long to trot off into the foothills of philosophy in search of a refutation of physicalism. Pretty quickly, they come across the following specimen. Where M is the mental and P the physical, the first line claims that there is no situation in which the mental is the physical, but wherein they don't share each and every quality. The second line then proposes that the mental lacks some quality that the physical has, or that the mental has some quality that the physical lacks. It doesn't matter too much what the quality in question is. Typically, it's something like the physical being located in space, while the mental is not, or the mental having qualities like conscious awareness or aboutness, which the physical lacks. It follows, therefore, as the third line says, that the mental is not the physical. The mind is immaterial. So, praise the Lord for life eternal and the safety of infants. Consider this similar argument, where P is the morning star and H the evening star. Here, the first line says that there is no possible situation in which the morning star is the evening star, but wherein they don't share each and every quality. The second line, in this case, could propose that the morning star has the quality of appearing in the east at dawn, a quality which the evening star lacks. The evening star, meanwhile, could be said to have the quality of appearing in the west at dusk, a quality which the morning star lacks. The final line concludes from this that the morning star is not the evening star. The problem is the morning star is the evening star because in reality they are both the planet Venus. There must therefore be a loophole in the argument. The loophole is that identical things need not share qualities which are understood as part of an incomplete account. The qualities of appearing in the east in the morning and in the west in the evening only seem significant when the observer is ignorant of the real state of affairs. When we find out about the sun, the stars and the planets, and why stars are invisible in a clear sunlit sky, we have no problem accepting that the morning star is the evening star, regardless of their different qualities, or indeed the principle of identity. In effect, the first line of the argument is false. Entities need not share each and every quality in order to be identical. Identical things need only share those qualities that are understood as referring to them as a single thing in a complete account. This loophole could also undermine the identity argument against physicalism. It cannot be ruled out that when we have a more complete picture of the mind-matter situation, the apparent spaceless nature of the material, or the physical's apparent lack of conscious awareness and aboutness, will resolve itself, like the dawn versus dusk appearance of Venus. Sadly, of course, this could well mean that we die when we die, Although I have to admit that without some highly dubious incompatibilist assumptions, the supposed exculpation of pederasts completely escapes my understanding. Thank you for listening.